I think that looks pretty cool. That is a pretty good project. So there you go. That's how you make a camping coach out of some scrap parts lying around. If you're new to the channel or you haven't already, don't forget to smash that subscribe button, click on the bell icon, select all, and you'll be notified every time we upload new content. So here we have it. We have our donor vehicle. This is a railroad style Grizzly Teak. It's got significant damage to it. It's actually got two completely different bogies on it. It's got three different types of wheel. We've got a metal one. We've got a wagon huge look like the triang spoked one we've got some white line plastic wheels on that side in fact if i look underneath this is one of the old ones with pickups for interior lightning that's been placed on here and this one's actually got a bolt holding this bogey on all together so it's a bit of a scrapper there there's a bit of detail broken on this under frame there's a coupling missing or snapped off on this side and we've got one coupling left on there it's basically in pretty poor condition it is possible to salvage it you could use it as spares you could probably do bits and pieces to it to make it a runner again but in this case what i'm going to do is make a camping coach or at least i'm going to attempt to make a camping coach using this so the first thing i want to do is i want to get the actual body the, the the chassis off from the top and it's going to be a bit difficult to take these bogies off because one's got a bolt running through it so i'm just going to go straight for the ends and pull the clips off there we go that's the chassis off luckily the interior glazing comes off on this one and we've got an interior there so i'm not going to need those for the time being they can just go straight into the box the first thing i want to do with this is i, I want to take the ends off they just slide straight off you can see them there i'm not going to do an awful lot to these because they're black which is actually really really good it's worked out well for me but they're just black ends and we're going to put them to one side so you can see now we have literally just got the top shell the first thing i want to do with this is going to brush off any dust there might be on that roof my next thought for this is i want to paint the roof i want to dull it down i'm not going to go really black i'm just going to sort of go for a, a gray and uh, and dull it down a bit so I was having a dive through the tubs and I was looking at different paints that I had lying around and I found a lot of different greys. I was going to use this uh, rail colour 422. I think it's uh, it might be a roof grey or in the city grey of some description. But while I was in there, I found this. It is a can left over from the platform project and it's what I sprayed the tops of the platforms with, which is C grey, number 27. It's almost a full can. And because I'm not too worried about the sides, I'm not preserving the actual paintwork or transfers that are on the sides there. I'm just going to take this to a well ventilated area and I'm going to give the top a flash over of this sea grey. So I'll be back soon. So it's been 24 hours and uh, there's the roof or where there's the shell anyway. And I just gave it a quick flash of that sea grey and um, dried off lovely. And it's just going to give me a, a different coloured roof now instead of that white for this camping coach. So next up, I need to mask up sort of along this line here just to separate it off and I think we'll do the next colour which will be sort of a creamy white colour to go along the top. Okay so I have masked up the bottom and I've just masked up the top along the top line as well just to make this a little bit easier. I'm going to do this by brush. So the first colour I'm going to use I've just been trying to pick up what I can at the sort of like out of boxes of paints that I actually have and uh, one of the ones is this it's a Humbrol acrylic 103 I believe it's some sort of like creamy color how well that shows up there on the camera I'm not too sure but I'm going to give it a go with this I have got some other ones I was looking at things like this Humbrol enamel which is a gloss 41 I'm liking the look of this one so I'm going to give this one a go first so to do it I'm going to use a Humbrol flat brush it's a 10 millimeter one possibly a little bit overkill but we're going to give it a go and I'm just going to sort of gently put on a scratch coat and initially to uh, see exactly what it looks like. So all I've done is given it several very thin coats and just built it up because I didn't want to lose all the detail well, as much as I could anyway. Obviously I'm doing it by hand. So I've just given it lots of very thin coats and I've tried to get into all of the window frames with those thin coats. So I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to peel off the masking tape and then I'll I think I'll leave it overnight and then tomorrow it'll just be a case of remasking along that part ready for the green. Thank you. 
That doesn't look too bad. That side hasn't come up too bad at all either. It's nice. So I'm gonna let that harden, like I say, make sure that's cured really well. And then I'll move on to the green. Okay, so next up, I'm going to be applying the green. And what I've actually done is I've got some spare tins left over from a lot of different projects. I think this was off possibly one of the Flying Scotsman Second Tender ones. And it's some Phoenix Precision. It's a satin dull color. It's a LEDR Loco Green. I think it's the Darlington shade. I've had a look at I don't think that's too far off the color. So I'm going to give it a go. I'm just trying to use up bits and pieces that have been lying around in the tub. So uh, we're going to give this a go with the Darlington Green. I was going to mask it off and then I realized there was a natural line running along. So I'm going to try it freehand. If it doesn't look right or I'm not too happy, then I might stop, let it dry and then go to masking. But I'm going to give it a give it a go freehand. I don't think that looks too bad for a first coat as you can see I did it freehand there is a natural line there and it's where I ran the actual masking tape when we were doing the, the cream part and the brush with it being a really nice it's a really good humbral flat brush added with the fact that I do find that the Phoenix precision paints are really really good to use it just flows really really well I'm gonna let that side dry off a bit and then I'm gonna attempt to get onto the other side and then hopefully I think only a second coat will do the trick. Okay, so I don't think that is a million miles off now with the uh, two coats. Now this green paint at the bottom is an enamel, so that is going to have to cure most likely overnight. And then afterwards, once it's cured off, some humbral clear over the entire model. And um, not only will that seal it all in, but it will also help prepare it for transfers. But at the moment, that's looking great. So I have left it 24 hours and uh, it's all hardened up and things like that. I don't think that looks too bad. It's not going to be excellent. I haven't used a spray gun or anything like that or an airbrush. I've just been doing this by hand or well, apart from the roof anyway, which I use the spray can on. But I'm just using up bits and bobs that are left around in the uh, modeling tubs. So the next stage is actually to give it a coat of the Humbrol Clear purely just because of the fact that I'm going to be applying transfers because I need a nice shiny surface to apply them to. So I'm going to give it a coat of Humbrol Clear. If you haven't seen me use this in other videos, uh, this is the stuff. It's absolutely great. I cannot speak more highly of it. it. You don't need any skill level for it. You just literally slap it on. It self levels. It dries fairly quickly. I usually leave it overnight to let it harden properly. So I'm going to give it a good coat of this. Just the one coat. Next up, time for some Humbrol Clear. So the Humbrol Clear has dried off. I've left that for a quite a while now. Both sides looking fine and the roof is looking good. So the next stage now is transfers. So to give you an idea, what I did was is I got in contact with Fox Transfers. On the internet, this is pack FRH4091 forward slash 1M in four millimeter scale. I ordered these yesterday. They have arrived this morning. That is how quick Fox transfers can be. So it's the usual case. If you haven't done it before, I've got lots of videos where I've done things like this. Not boiling hot, it's just very warm water with a tiny drop of washing up liquid. Just helps with it separating from the transfer paper. I'm gonna cut out the actual transfers I wanna use and I'll just do a time lapse with me fitting them. If you've got any questions, if you've never done it before, feel free to ask in the comments. So just like that, it's the next day and all the transfers have been applied. I've put a coat of Humbrol Clear over the top of them and uh, I think that's looking pretty good. I don't want any of the purists getting upset. I have absolutely no idea whether a coach like this carried that number. I have literally just used 
the transfers that are in the pack. There's enough there to do about three coaches if you want to do them. But I've just picked a set of numbers, put them on the left-hand side. I've put the camping coach on the centre. I made up a mythical number and put it on this end door. And I've put the no breaks transfer on the end. And on the ends of the actual coach, I've put no breaks as well. And I've just slotted them back onto the end of the shell. I did put some Humbrol clear over all of the transfers. So I know that they are sealed and they're a little bit more protected. So that part is done. Um, we've got the glazing here and I've already started a little bit of work on the glazing. I've actually made it so that two of the middle doors are blanked off. You can see there and just put a bit of paint on just to blank them off. Now you could just put it back together like that with the interior but I came up with a little idea. I often I keep all of the spares from any project handy unless they might come into use again. What I have here is a sheet of the doors and curtains and paving and things like that from a Metcalf kit that was just scraps and spares. And then it just dawned on me that these windows would have had curtains or neck curtains. So I'm gonna cut out these curtains, which are a little bit oversized, but I'm gonna cut them out. I'm gonna try and utilize them. And in order to dull out the window so you can't really see the interior, I have got some tracing paper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fit curtains to the spaces along this side here on this coat, on this coach here along this side. I'm gonna fit some curtains along the glazing. And then behind the glazing, I'm gonna put a strip of tracing paper so you can make out the curtains and you can make out things like that, but you can't quite see inside. So I'm gonna try that now. Okay, so it might look a little bit untidy, but what I've done is I've put in some curtains and I've put some of the tracing paper behind it down the full length just to sort of blur it out a little bit. I'm just going to put tracing paper down the other side because I'm not really going to see that side when I use this, but I also want to see what kind of effect that leaves on its own anyway, and then I'm going to fit it into the coach. So, frosted windows with curtains. We've got our two blanked off doors here and here. That's looking good to me. And I don't have to see that interior. And on the other side, I've just frosted it up with some tracing paper. So, I'm just gonna try and reassemble this coach. We have ourselves a nice little camping coach out of a scrap LNER Gresley T. I am happy with that. I think that looks pretty cool. That is a pretty good project. So there you go. That's how you make a camping coach out of some scrap parts lying around. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's given you some inspiration. Maybe you'll give this a go. Maybe you've already done this sort of thing. Either way, let me know in the comments. Don't forget, like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the Aiden Shorts channel. I've put a video here at the top that you might like, and there's a playlist there at the bottom. And I shall see you again soon. Bye now.